You welcome back to the conversation and New Central Television. We begin uh, first a topic of discussion in Nigeria, where the Labour Party has rejected claims that Julius Abure, as party leader, was ousted by the appeal court ruling. Instead, the Labour Party clarified that the Court of Appeal in Awari, Irma State, dismissed the appeal filed by Basil Maduka, a candidate contending for the party's governorship candidacy in Imo State. The Labour Party urges supporters and the general public to distance themselves from ousted members, emphasising that the Court of Appeal's decision favoured their stance. In a statement, the Labour Party's National Publicity Secretary, Obiora Ifo, alleged that a papa's faction distorted the appellate court's ruling, while reports have suggested that the Court of Appeal in Oweri removed Julio Sabure as the Labour Party's national chairman and recognised La Media Papa as the Labour Party clarified that the court's decision was in line and the trial court's ruling and comments by the trial judge were not binding. The Labour Party maintained that Senator Atham Achonu remains the valid nominee for the 2023 Emo governorship election, citing the Court of Appeals judgment and the endorsement from key party figures. Now, joining me this evening uh, for this all-important discussion is Monday Mawa, Deputy National Secretary of the Labour Party and lawyer to La Media Papa. He joins us live from the federal capital territory of Buja. We also have Advance of Failure, a legal practitioner who joins us from Lagos, Nigeria, and also Eze, of course, Splendor, governorship candidate, Labour Party in a boy state, joins us from the nation's capital, Abuja. One welcome to you, gentlemen, and thanks for joining me on the conversation this evening. Thank you. Good evening. Now, I'd like to start with Evans E. Fairly, o. Fairly to give us uh, the legal background to all of this. Evans, could you help us understand the recent developments regarding the leadership of the Labour Party and the appeal court's judgment. In layman's terms, what does this judgment mean to the uh, internal crisis in the Labour Party? Could you help us make sense of it? Well, um, the judgment is not out, meaning the judgment delivered by the Court of Appeal is not out yet for public consumption. But the La Media Papa faction and the Julius Abure's faction have come up with different um, interpretations. The La Media Papa's faction have the view that um, the courts have nullified uh, the position of the prior court that declared uh, uh, Abure as the chairman of uh, the Labour Party. Okay? But um, the Abure faction is of the view that the Lamidia Papa faction distorted the judgment of uh, the, the Court of Appeal and that it did not in any way uh, made uh, their own candidate the chairman of uh, the Labour Party. So in the mix of the, the confusion, uh, there are what we saw on the public domain and especially what the media reported because right now it is practically the media report that is mm -hmm. available for public reading and all over the news is that uh la media papa is now by the outcome of the court of appeals uh, judgment now the chairman now sorry of, to interrupt uh, you evans uh, just to get this clear and to understand how the Nigerian judiciary works. If you're going to pronounce, make a pronouncement, make a judgment, is it not supposed to come with everything that works with it, like the entire judgment? Uh, should it not be published? And when do we expect to, uh, I mean, for legal, for, for uh, legal practitioners to understand the reasoning behind this judgment and the entire step uh, the judge took to arrive at this judgment? When should we expect it? And uh, does it always come uh, with a judgment? Well, it, it will come with a judgment. It, it will come within the week, okay, because it is when it is reported uh, in the Nigerian Weekly Law Reports or in the other subsidiary law mm -hmm. reports that you can get a hold of the true ruling of the court. If you are not in court, if you are not in court, you can only get a hold of it 
the same week, but not the same day. Okay, so it is when the law report comes out with the the ratio, the reason behind the judgment, and actually what the judgment is. Lawyers are very careful to uh, use uh, reports made by uh, journalists uh, from the newspaper to yeah. make analysis, especially on a, a, a national television like this, where the public consumption uh, is quite high. So that is why I leverage my analysis on the outcome of the fashions, so what the fashions are saying. Um, the Lamidia Papa fashion believe that the court ruling is of the view that Lamidia Papa has been made the chairman, the acting chairman by mm -hmm. its uh, pronouncement. Why Julius Abure's fashion have the view that Lamidia Papa's fashion distorted the views of the court of appeal. Okay, and what you have now is a kind of confusion uh, because. Right yes. now, even if now, no, go, go ahead and complete your thoughts, uh, Evans. Yeah, right now, even if um, even if um, uh, the court have made a pronouncement and is in favour of Lamidia Papa, it is not watertight. It's not wholesome. It's not wholesome because I am not reading from the law reports. Exactly. I would like to get the judgment from the law report because I was not in court when that pronouncement was made. Okay. But uh, those who support Aburi and those who support Lamidia Papa, they are giving the public a, a strong... I make stronger arguments to back up their case. And I guess uh, when the law report is out, they can uh, make their judgments and see uh, the reasoning of the court. I'd like to bring in uh, Mr. Eze Splendor, governorship candidate at Labour Party in Ibonyo State, into the conversation. Mr. Splendor... You're a member of the Labour Party. Uh, to you, what's the significance of the appeal court's decision in the ongoing leadership dispute uh, within the Labour Party? And how does it affect the overall uh, workers of the party? How much of a distraction uh, is it? Thank you very much. Um, like the last speaker just uh, uh, informed you, I want to put the record straight. The judgment he is talking about that is not out is out already. We have the CTC of the judgment, okay? The, the judgment borders on uh, Basil Maduka, who was, um, you know, defeated in the court of, uh, in the Federal High Court, you know, over the primary election that was conducted by Alhaji Lamidia Papa on the 16th, while that of uh, Abure was conducted on the 15th of April. So the bottom line is that before now, there, there is an allegation leveled against Abure that borders on forgery, perjury, and criminal conspiracy. And I want to make bold to say that, that this case started immediately after the Labour Party primary election that was conducted on the 9th of June, 2022. I am the principal person whose signature was forged, mm. okay? In, in, uh, on the 9th of June, after we conducted For, the Forged in what, in what capacity, if, if I may ask? Yes, I was validly nominated as the governorship candidate of Labour Party in Ebony State. So after that primary, I monitored the primary and then um, published my name as the governor chief candidate of Labour Party in Ebony State. Thereafter, Barrister Julius Abure went and got a man he, he believed that, that, that has a lot of money and then bargained with the man for amount of uh, money to be paid 
in order for him to enjoy my ticket. So he eventually collected some money from the man that runs in millions, which the man made a confessional statement. M M Mr. Police. Splendor, permit me to interrupt you here. These are very serious allegations you're making on national television. Do you have uh, any evidence to back your assertion that Mr. Abure did collect money from this uh, man uh, to substantiate this claim you're making? Yes, the, yes. The man was invited in the police. You know, I petitioned Barrister Julius Abure and the three others for forging my signature. So the man came to the police station and made a confessional statement that is recorded that he paid the sum of 200 million naira to them. You know, and that was the reason why uh, Barrister Julius Abure had to, you know, Go to went to the extent of uh, uh, um, um, forging my signature, writing a letter of withdrawal, you know, to INEC, stating that I am incapacitated, that I am not willing to run the election anymore. Without consulting me, without cons my consent, he wrote this letter to INEC, thereby substituting me illegally without my consent. When I got the information from INEC that a letter of withdrawal has been sent to the commission, you know, stating that I have withdrawn from the race, I was, I was, I was actually astonished. That made me to um, board the, boarded the first, the next available flight to Abuja. When I got to Abuja, I went to the commission, and the commission directed that I have to write formally mm. to demand for the citizenship. So I instructed my, my lawyer to write okay. to INEC. Can you hear me? The man yes, uh, loud and clear. But thank you very much for giving us uh, that uh, background to uh, the situation in the Labour Party and the current state uh, of things uh, with you and the party and the Julio Subaru faction. But I'd like to bring in Mr. Monde Mawa, uh, the Deputy National Secretary, of the Labour Party and uh, lawyer to Lamidi Apapa. Uh, now, Barrister Mawa, the Labour Party has claimed that the Lamidi Apapa led faction, uh, which your lawyer to, uh, twisted the appeal court judgment. Uh, could you elaborate on this claim and uh, what's your take on, on, on the situation and the judgment of the appeal court? Well, first and foremost, I want to sincerely apologize to this now for inability to join life of the embassy with me from with my head where I am here in Africa. So I sincerely apologize. I think I'm already on now. I don't know if you can please me to it. Yeah, go ahead. I can hear you loud and clear. Go ahead, please. Yes. Now, the, what happened at this point, this story of the uh, court of appeal, this and that, if you don't actually understand where it all started from, you will not know where we are and why we are where we are today. Now, for the benefit of uh, listeners that have not been following us from the beginning, on the 6th of April 2023, the SCP High Court City in Abu Jaye granted the restraining order, restraining Abu the, 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 the National Secretary of of Alaji Faru Kumar, the Organizing Secretary. Then he organized the national treasurer, one of Luchi of Para. They were restrained from party themselves or carrying out their duty as national officer of the Labour Party, pending the determination of the suit before the court. That was on the tip of April. Now, as a result of that restraining order against Abuja, and of course, in accordance with Article 14, Sub 2, Paragraph B of the Labour Party Constitution, which provide that in the absence of the national chairman, the deputy takes over. And like the Papa Bashiru, who was at that material time, the deputy national chairman, took over in an acting capacity. Now, again, it will interest you to know that before the court granted that restraining order, the party had already scheduled date for primary for Imo, Bayeta, and Kogi State for their forthcoming election, which is Slated for its level of November this year. Now, immediately Abure was restrained, the NWC met and decided to change the date from 15 to 16. 
and thereafter communicated that change to INEC. Now, surprisingly, that fact is suspension on the 11th of April 2023. Mr. Bray and his other cases offended men and and purportedly screwed as far as that were to participate in the primary election. It didn't end there. On the 15th, despite the restraining order that was still pending, he went ahead to reportedly conduct a primary for those as far as they allowed themselves to be used by him, by the then. And then they declared one Mr. Aton as the governorship candidate from their camp on the 15th of April. Now, of course, don't forget, I've already told you that Alajababa has written to IME, changing the date of primary to sustain. And so he went ahead and conducted the primary on the 16th of April. That is 1 6. Now, one of the aspirants who participated in the primary on the 15th, that was a very conducted primary, approached the Federal High Court to say, well, he is the one that also has been declared the candidate of the Labour Party for the November 11th gubernatorial election. And he approached the court and joined the Labour Party, INEC, and the who we popularly popularly for a king who was the candidate that emerged from the Lamito Papa primary. He joined them as defenders in the suit. The court having gone through the entire evidence presented before him, made a very made made very mm. useful findings and two major useful findings. And the first finding was that that yes, from the evidence before the court, there are two primary conducted on two different days, one on the fifteenth and one on the 16th. And the court heard that the primary conducted on the 16th is the valid primary in view of the date that had been changed by the Act National Chairman. That is the first vote. Then the second vote was that the court also found that it is the Asapa Namibi fashion primary that is valid because as of the 15th when Apure conducted the primary, that it had already been restrained by the order of the court. That will be okay. Also, Th also thank you. Fine. Thank you very much, Barrister Mawa. I would like to bring in uh, Barrister Evans Ofeli uh, back into the conversation at this point. Uh, Barrister Ofeli, we did hear what Barrister Mawa uh, said in his session, uh, but there seems to be uh, some level of confusion about the Court of Appeals ruling with claims of Julius Bure being sacked as national chairman. Uh, from what you've heard from Barrister Mawa. Uh, can you clarify the actual outcome of the judgment? And does this case need to get to the Supreme Court uh, for everybody to, to streamline and say, look, this is the final decision of the court and this is what it is? Because we seem to be hearing uh, different versions depending on where your interest and loyalty lies. And uh, I, I believe the judiciary uh, shouldn't work like that. It doesn't actually work like that, but people... Uh, like you said, uh, making their own interpretations. Yes, I, I think in the case we have to get to the Supreme Court for, for clarity. Because um, if you look at like what the last week I said, I talked about the fact that uh, before now, Abure had been restrained. And um, when the dates for the primaries was um, uh, announced, uh, there was a change. Um, Lamidia Papa uh, did made a change from 15 to the 16th, uh, standing as the acting uh, chairman of the uh, political party. But um, what the outcome is is that the court of appeal now declared that, that of the 16th as a valid, uh, valid one. And I think it is by this declaration that the supporters of Lamedi Papa implied that it therefore means that Papa is the valley chairman in in in, in the scheme of things mm -hmm. but i believe that this this will be made clear when they get to the final the apex court because the confusion is quite um, very huge and th th there seems to be uh, some level of distortion here and there if you set out to interview the supporters of aburi they will tell you that mm -hmm the court of appeal the same judgment we are discussing they will tell you that the court of appeal never said what 
is up here. I am happy that they... So, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you. As we speak at the moment, the has any speaker. one of the parties challenged this judgment? And uh, do we know if it will be going uh, to the Supreme Court? Is that a question for me? Yes, uh, Barris O'Feely. From what we know, uh, uh, as this judgment... Uh, been challenged. No, the judgment has just been the judgment has just been delivered. Now, just I mean, it's not up to even two days yet. But I believe that the, it's going to be challenged. It's going to be challenged because the two warring parties are contending the outcome of the court of appeal. You see, the outcome of the Supreme Court cannot be contended like this because um, it's going to be the final pronouncement. And the, fun, the final pronouncement must come with it, a, a kind of finality for which parties will make resolution to act in accordance with the pro, uh, uh, pronouncement of the court. And that is exactly what is going to happen. Um, if this is taken to the court of uh, the uh, Supreme Court, the Supreme Court will ask the issues properly and come up with the final judgment and parties will, will know where, where they stand because right now, um, some parties are vehemently of the view that Lamidia Papa is the chairman. Others say Julius Abure is the chairman. There were allegations of corruption, the allegations even on both sides, even on both sides, allegations of corruption here and there. But until we get to that part where the Supreme Court will make that finality, no one can really say that we have heard the, the, the last word in this the matter on that okay. reference. Th 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 so thank let's you. wait and see yes. how it turns out. Thank you, Barisu Feli. I would like to bring in uh, Ezio Okor Splendor, uh, governorship candidate at Labour Party in a boy state. You are a senior member of the party. Uh, my final question to you as we begin to wrap up conversation uh, on this subject is, what challenges might the Labour Party face internally and externally following these appeal court's judgments and the conflicting claims? And how might this ongoing leadership dispute and the appeal court's decision influenced the party's prospects in the upcoming 2023 emo governorship election there's a saying that a house divided cannot stand on its own please the network was very poor here i couldn't get you properly can you yes I, I, i'll repeat myself i said uh what challenges uh, might the Labour Party face internally and externally following this, following this appeal court judgment and the conflicting, conflicting claims? And how might this ongoing leadership tussle within the Labour Party and the appeal court's decision influence the party's prospects in the upcoming 2023 emo governorship elections? Because they say a house divided, a house divided cannot stand on its own. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, is, yes, go ahead, please. Okay, we, we, we seem. Hello, Mr. Splendor, are you there? Okay, we seem to have lost uh, connection with Mr. Splendor. I'll just direct that question to the Deputy National uh, Secretary of uh, the Labour Party, Barrister Monday Mawa. So, what yes. might this yes. challenge is course? I didn't really complete. I didn't really complete my statement earlier. Okay, go ahead, I please. I give you about information of what brought us to appeal court. Now, what the appeal court did yesterday, they satisfied the judge for the court and sort of appeal. And they approached sorry, uh, on the federal high court, they approached court of appeal. And yesterday, court of appeal in a unanimous judgment affirmed the judgment of the court of appeal for the federal high court sitting in the world. And so the implication of that is that it is only the country that emerged from primary consulted on the 16th of April that is the first candidate of Labour Party for the November election for the November election. And also, apart from this, 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 this apart from this thing, it is only country that emerged from a large led party that is the valid candidate. And so, to answer your question as to what does it pose to our victory in the forthcoming election, don't forget the election is not just about the individual, the election is about the party. So, in all of these campaigns are already ongoing in Imo State, Kogi, and Bayesa. To 
the election. So we are not going to be affected in any way. And mm -hmm. the Labour Party is now the, 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 the brand of the, in the town, in terms of the choice of the people. So I can assure you categorically today that the candidate of Labour Party, in person of Ikeku Kukabu, aka Ikeka, is going to emerge victoriously from the November 11th. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Barrister Mondo Mawab. Uh, I believe we've run out of time. And I'd say thank you uh, to you for your time and insights uh, and for joining us on the conversation, Mr. Uh, Mondo Mawab, Deputy National Secretary of Labour uh, Party and lawyer to uh, Lamedia Papa, who joined us live from Abuja. And also like to say thank you to you, Evans, a freely uh, legal practitioner and also uh, AC Oko Splendor, governorship candidate, Labour Party in a boy state. Uh, thank you very much for being a part of the conversation. We do appreciate your insights and your candor.